what's going on guys once again thank you to everyone that has bought any training and thank you to the nerd tribe one of the things that i'm going to do since my little break is starting to be grateful for the people who support blending camera in this video the average person if they made an additional $3,000 a month, which is $36,000 a year, on top of what they already make is life-changing money. Uh, years and years ago, when I started this channel, I started this channel for men long before the Manosphere came into be because one of the things that I learned is economic empowerment is critical for you to be the man that you can be and what do i mean by economic empowerment first of all everyone is not going to be a millionaire and the good news is you don't have to be a millionaire to have a great life it's not required so when i said economic empowerment you need to have a paid off car you need to live on your own and ideally have 25 to fifty thousand dollars cash money in the bank just being right there as a single man puts you in the top five percent of americans in terms of net worth and financial stability once again a paid off car $25,000, $30,000 in the bank, living on your own with no bills. Because, you know, I get a lot of people who want to talk about Bugattis. When I was talking about the lying crypto so-called billionaire, he has a Bugatti. Uh, Andrew Tate has a Bugatti. And someone put up there, I don't think that $3 million is a significant amount of wealth for 95% of Americans. Three million is life-changing money. Life-changing money. Now, what do I mean when I say the average American? Once again, I don't know, I did this video a long time ago, but I went to the Google machine and I added up average income and 75%, 80% of Americans make between 30 and $35,000 per year single person income, which on the $30,000 per year is less than $2,000 a month take home. So this is why I say that if the average American was to make $3,000 per month on top of what they already make, it would be an incredible life-changing moment. I wanna share my story with you and I wanna give you some hard numbers. My burn rate, what is a burn rate? A burn rate is how much money you spend to maintain yourself. Now, my burn rate is significantly less than my income and there's a reason why. My burn rate is about 84, to about 100K a year. That's what it costs for me to run my business. That's what it costs for me to live, drive my cars, buy medical insurance, buy health insurance, buy uh, life insurance. That's my, that's my burn rate. And I intentionally keep it there because number one, it doesn't take a lot of money for me to be happy. Even though I do make more, it it is as a self-actuated man you pick and choose what makes you happy now i've never had the experience of driving a bugatti but i've had the experience of driving a ferrari i've had the experience of driving a lambo and I'm not a fan of those cars, and I have a feeling I would not be a fan of a Bugatti. Now, this is me, and this is a little weird quirk about me. 
I would not pay hundreds of thousands of dollars for a car that isn't a convertible or doesn't have a sunroof. This is why, even though the Rolls Royce uh, brand is a beautiful car, the, 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 with the starlight interior headlining, you're paying half a million dollars for a car that doesn't have a sunroof. For me, that makes no sense, but that's just one of the quirks of Glendon Cameron. But I have no desire to have a Bugatti. Now, interestingly enough, I've Googled, I could afford one. I could have a Bugatti. It would be one of the most ridiculous, wasteful things I've ever done in my life. But if I wanted one, I could get one. But here's the thing. I don't do stuff for other people. Now, there's probably someone out there who has a Bugatti, who enjoys the, techno the technology of the car. It's a beautiful car. They have one. Every time they get it, they smile. I feel there's a group of people who are buying the Bugatti because they like the brand, they like the technology. Now, the majority of people who have Bugattis are buying them to flex. They're buying them to impress other people. And as a self-actuated man, I don't have no need to impress other people. And once again, if I wanted the Bugatti, I could have one. But Here's another thing that I've come to understand from having very expensive cars. Very expensive cars are very expensive to maintain. My BMW truck, just the tires are $2,000. A brake job on the front is $2,000. A brake job on the rear is $1,500. This is normal maintenance. The oil change for my BMW was like 200 bucks. The oil change for my Porsche was like 250. So I can imagine, like T-Pain did an interview talking about why he sold this Bugatti. He said the maintenance of this thing was ridiculous because the car has so much power that they have to do something special with the tires or the rims would just spin around in the tires. So he said it was like $20,000 to change the tires on this car. And I assume an oil change would be $1,500, if not $2,000. So for me, once again, at my heart, I'm a normal, reasonable person. Like, I don't, I don't have the capacity to buy a Gulfstream jet those are like 70 million i don't have that kind of money uh, but if i did would i buy one once again the maintenance and upkeep of a private jet is stupid it's two to three million a year to maintain a jet so unless i had a business need that made sense for me to have a private jet even if I had the money, I wouldn't buy one because this is how people go broke. T-Pain is a prime example. T-Pain started to smarten up because what's the last time T-Pain had a hit? See, when you go out, and this is one of the things I consistently see, a lot of people are flying private because it's a social media thing. Um, to fly from Atlanta to Florida on a private jet depending on where you get in, it's going to be seven to $30,000. A first class ticket is 1,200 to 1,500 at the most, at the most. So for me, I'm, once again, I'm a practical business person. If I had a valid need, if I needed to be in two or three cities, you know, three or four times a week, and that was part of my business, a private jet would make sense. But if I'm just a regular person flying around the world and I'm flying private to impress people, I assure you that is a good way to go broke. Because you're spending money, you're allocating money in things that don't make financial sense. But the whole Bugatti, it's a facade. 
you know, someone left a comment, and this is the new social media policy. When I figure you're a fool, I just block you, delete your comment, and keep it moving. And it was one person, um, I don't think three million is a lot of money. Once again, to the average person, $3 million is a staggering amount of money. And then he went on, I made my first million at 25. Now, once again, since I took my break and I came on break, I do not engage with these fools. I don't engage with these fools because if I was to have a conversation, because here's the thing, and this is a common thing here on YouTube, you would have Jordan Welch, he's one of them. He's a YouTuber and he had a drop shipping store and he put out that he was a millionaire because his drop shipping store did 1.8 million. Okay, Jordan Welch is not a millionaire. And I'm gonna explain to you how I know. I had a business where I made $1.6 million. And after taxes, cost of goods and expenses, I had a profit of $40,000. Drop shipping is an extremely high cost business. So he actually on his channel, he has a video where he had a month where he did 110,000 and he had $90,000 in expenses. So using that video that's on his channel, go to Jordan Welch, he has a video breaking it down. So if you go ahead and calculate 90,000 times 12, that's a million dollars in expenses. And then you calculate the 20,000 profit times 12, that's 240,000. Oh, after 240, taxes are coming out. So there's no way that Jordan Welch is a millionaire, but it is put out that he's a millionaire because he had a drop shipping store that did $1.8 million in sales. Years and years ago, they used to hate me in the resale space because all of these Amazon people was like, I have an Amazon store doing a million a month. And I was like, what's the net? Cause see, I'm a seasoned business person. I like, I hear, oh, a million. All right, what are your expenses? What are your costs? What are your cost of goods? Because here's the thing, and this is why there are so many people who are teaching Amazon FBA. The vast Amazon FBA person doesn't make a lot of take home money. You can have someone who is doing a million a month gross sales and they literally are taking home 30 or $40,000 after expenses, cost of goods and taxes. So this person, I made a million dollars when I was 25. If I wanted to go into it, cause I don't go down these rabbit holes anymore. I don't go this cause you're dealing with foolish people. And I'm just like, all right, when you made your first million, you know, cause if I had engaged this fool in the conversation, cause this is another thing. Um, these fools have a need for attention and they want my attention like they're a bitch. Oh, it's like Glendon Cameron, he's talking to me. Let me keep this, like literally, and this is one of the things I refuse to do going forward. If I'm talking to a fool, cause I know if I engage the fool, they will keep talking. They will keep lying, they will keep dropping stuff. And if I was to talk to this fool who is lying, because here's the thing. The number of people who are making a million dollars at the age of 25 in, in the industry in any capacity is extremely small. You can literally have a million 25 year old people in the room and literally not have one of them making a million dollars. So it is really, now you got your Cardi B's, you got your bad Barbies, you got your rappers, you got your NFL rookies. Yeah, these guys are making seven, eight figures. But I am highly suspicious of anyone who gets into Bugatti land. Because like I said, this channel is built for the average person. If you're so special and you're making so much money, why are you watching this channel? Cause this channel is built for the 
average person. It's not built for the corporate game. That's built for people who have businesses and they want to scale. B school for hustlers. That's built for people who want to start a business. The conversation over here, and this channel gets the most views out of all of my channels, is about the inst insights and wisdoms about the economy. Why are you here since you're so rich? I don't watch Erica Williams. I have no need. I don't think there's shit that Erica could teach me. I don't watch Valuetainment. I don't watch Anton Daniels. I don't watch um, a lot of people on YouTube. I don't consume their content because I don't feel they can teach me shit. But why are you here since you so rich? You got so much money hanging out your ass. You're here because you're trying to come up. That's why you're here. And this is why I appreciate the nerd tribe. This is why I appreciate the people who bought the courses. You understand your position in life. And the other day, I had a situation where a new student is coming into the fold and we had a very good conversation. I am an educator, I'm a business person, I'm a mentor. And once again, um, if you're so rich, cause like, like here, here's the thing, here's the thing. Google zip code 30327, the average home price. That's the neighborhood I spent in some shape or fashion or form because I, I actually lived in that zip code for about four years and I was in Sandy Springs and I have lived around real significant wealth. I literally was running into Dr. J, Theo Radcliffe, um, Cordell Stewart, uh, Boris Kojo, literally running into these people in the wall and not the, the Whole Foods and Bar Waka Flocka. So I have lived amongst people who are legitimately, truly wealthy. And they don't do the bullshit that you see here on YouTube. You just don't see that bull, they don't do that. So I know what real wealth looks like. And I guarantee you, Dr. J is not watching my YouTube channel. I guarantee it, he's not watching my YouTube channel. Uh, Bill Gates is not watching my YouTube channel. Jeff Bezos is not watching my YouTube channel. Elon Musk is not watching my YouTube channel. Because once again, they're on a different level. So if you're so rich, why are you watching my YouTube channel? It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. Because all of the fools are over here. I have to say, that since, uh, here's the thing, I've done a pivot. I refuse to put out the, what's up hustlers, content. Because you guys are smart. Uh, I can tell you, you get a box truck and you start a company, you'll make more money. I am not in the, hey, do this and you can make some money real quick business. I feel that, cause I've been watching some channels and there's two white chicks who have these channels. You could do these simple side hustles and make a lot of money. Their channels are starting to grade because honestly, the content they put out is trash. It's just, it doesn't work. It's not, it's not applicable. And people are figuring it out and their views are starting to tank because it's like, hey, if I watch such and such, I am not gonna get helpful useful, accurate information. It's not happening over there. And on my B-School for Hustlers, there will never be a video talking about do this simple thing and make a lot of money. That's one of the things that triggers the YouTube algorithm. That's one of the things that can get you a lot of views and get you a lot of YouTube money. But here's the thing. I have never made a lot of money from YouTube directly. This year, I'll probably make 100K from YouTube. First time that's ever happened. But I've made millions from selling my own products. 
So I have been able to tell you the truth because I don't need YouTube money. And I've made a vow to myself during my break that anything that's gonna be on the corporate game is gonna be useful, helpful, accurate content. Anything that's gonna be on B-School for Hustlers is gonna be useful, helpful, accurate content. You guys are smart. If I were to sit down and tell you, hey, if you went to medical school and became a doctor, you'd make a lot of money, you'd be like, duh. I already know that. And that's one of the things that I feel that is really wrong with YouTube because here's the thing. We got the global reset. We're in a recession right now and it's gonna get worse and people are struggling. People are struggling and they're looking for solutions and they're looking for answers and they're turning to YouTube University and in many regards, a lot of content creators on YouTube are full of shit. They are, they're not gonna tell you anything. They just wanna get views. And what I feel is we're gonna have a renaissance. And like I said, these two people I've been watching, their, channel, their views are starting to tank. They're starting to struggle to get views because people are trying to apply this garbage advice and it ain't working. So I feel in the future, I'm gonna win. And like, once again, there's gonna be nothing that's gonna get you in trouble. There's nothing that's gonna be illegal. Uh, I got a video talking about how to pay yourself out of an LLC that's coming up. I think that's on the corporate game right now. So this whole Bugatti wealth, um, a lot of people, and this is one of the things, Grant Cardone, the, the undercover billionaire, Grant Cardone is not a billionaire. But once again, this kind of goes back to Jordan Welch. Grant Cardone may control billions of dollars of real estate, but from an equity position, he's not a billionaire. I don't think he's a billionaire quite yet. He may get there, but when he did the undercover billionaire, he was not a billionaire. And this is one of the things we see in the internet hype cycle. Andrew Tate in the Bugattis, this uh, clown who claims to be a billionaire from crypto. Um, it's just all lies. It's just lies. And for you, and once again, this is why I tell you what my burn rate is. I have a pretty good life. And I'm doing that on less than 100K a year. I am not spending millions of dollars. I'm not, and I have a pretty good life. I drive a Porsche, I drive a BMW, I live in the high rise. I eat out virtually every day. I'm living a pretty damn good life. And I'm doing this under 100K, but there's structure, there's a reason. Number one, I have no debt. So I'm not servicing debt. Now, I'm not against debt. If you can go ahead and let's say, let, let me explain to you what I'm getting ready to do. And I'm not gonna mention the business until I actually shape some stuff up, but I'm starting a new business, right? And I got to get licensed and it's probably gonna take me two months to do all that. And then what I'm gonna do next December, 2023, I'm gonna walk into a Chase bank and I'm gonna get a $250,000 line of credit that I'm gonna use for this new business. Because at that point, the business will be up, it will be running, it will be making money. Once again, I am not against debt. Uh, I got a bunch of credit cards. I got like a million dollars between my personal credit and my billion cr business credit. I'm over seven figures in credit. I'm not against credit, but I feel to use credit to start an unproven business is dangerous. To use credit to speculate on stocks and crypto is just stupid, in my opinion. And I do believe that if you go ahead and start a business, work out all of the kinks, blind sides and uglies, and then you get it where it's making money and then you use debt to grow that business, that makes sense. But to start a business, to get your hands on some credit to literally start your business, I think that's one of the most foolish things you can do. And this is why I put out the information that I put out 
And I don't put this information out from a, a blind spot. I put this information out from practical applications. And this is why, you know, I'm not going ahead and say, you know, who here is going to be a millionaire next year? I literally cringe when I hear that type of stuff because here's the thing. I am showing you that you can have a really good life without, you know, once again, my burn rate, my burn rate is very, very small percentage of my gross income. Because here's another reason that my burn rate is what it is. It usually takes me a while to adjust my spending because I need to make sure that the increased income is stable before I start adjusting my spending. Right now, this is the highest burn rate I've ever had since I've been in business, which is typically the biggest thing I have is rent, which is 4,700 bucks per month. That's my largest expense. And everything else is about two. And I have a girlfriend who is not really that expensive. She doesn't cost me a lot of money. You know, I treat her good. I buy her nice stuff. So she's not like breaking the bank or anything. So I'm living a good life. I have a relationship. And I understand that this whole Bugatti wealth, because, you know, I see it f quite frequently on YouTube. You'll have a kid who is spending 1200 1600 month, 1600 bucks a month on a Dodge Hellcat. Yet he's living in this little podoc town and he's literally spending half the money he makes for a car that is a depreciating asset because he wants to be seen as someone. Recently, there was some drag racing that was happening in the neighborhood and the police caught him. And guess what they had? Dodge Charger Hellcats. And these people want these cars to flex. Like, I would be more impressed with a 25 year old saying like, I'm spending $1,600 a month on an investment property. That's more impressive to me than some young financially illiterate person spending four figures per month for a car, have no assets, own no real estate, don't have no business, that's just stupid. It's just stupid. And, you know, as someone who has what some people consider to be a supercar, some people consider the Porsche 911 Turbo S to be a supercar. Some people don't. But it took me a minute to get into this frame mindset of having these cars because they're literally very expensive to maintain. God forbid if some breaks, like the Porsche is brand new, and it's got a warranty, and the BMW has a warranty. So, once again, for the average person, the average person, you know, if you're one of these fake ass millionaires watching my channel who wants to literally have these conversations, and this is something else too, and this always happens, like, you know, I was like, okay, send me proof that you're saying, at Glendon Cameron at savagefinance.org. I have no reason to prove anything to you every damn time. Cause it ain't true. It ain't true. You wanna go ahead and put in the comments that you have all this money making all these investments, but when I ask for proof, oh no, no, uh, I, I have nothing to prove to you. I, I, like to, I like to make my moves in silence. I'm like, why the hell are you saying you're making all this money in the comment section if you like to make your moves in silence? It makes no sense. And the number of people who are lying about, uh, I, I came across this video the other day and it was uh, talking about these two young black women who retired and they're teaching financial literacy and this, this interview was missing a lot of critical information. How much money were you making? Because see, here's the thing. There's this false premise that someone can drop a mindset nugget. And the mindset is extremely critical. Don't get me wrong. But 
You need a certain amount of money to be in investments to become a millionaire in 20 years. I don't care how you splice it, you need a certain amount of money because are you gonna need 40 and 50% returns on your very small investment? And I, I, you know, they were talking and talking and talking and talking. And I personally didn't get any information, nothing. I, I, cause it was just talk, talk, talk. Cause I'm a numbers guy. Tell me the numbers. Tell me how much money you made. How much did you invest? What was the yield rates? I, I need that kind of information because I am not in YouTube university to be entertained. And I felt that they didn't give any information that can help anyone do anything, nothing. And, you know, once again, this, you know, I'm getting ready to do some new training and I want to level up average people. And you're not going to level up. You're not going to do anything remarkable or significant with me sitting here lying to you and telling you that, hey, you can invest a hundred bucks per month in the stock market and you can retire in seven years. Meet Kevin, put that video out. And you know, I gotta learn the art of clickbait because the real estate trapper actually did a video where he did some clickbait and he didn't talk about none of the shit that was in the title and it worked. He got a lot of views on that video. So I, I'm watching, I gotta learn how to do that because he didn't lie, he didn't make up anything, but he did a really good clickbait tactic and he got some views. He got a lot of views on that video. But um, this whole thing is, we're in an environment that scams, fraud, and criminal activity is about to skyrocket. As the economy gets worse, a lot of people who were not turning the crime will start turning the crime. Uh, like one of the things I was watching, and this is stuff I intimately know. The KDP space or low content books. Um, I actually made a lot of money from Amazon Create Space, which is in conjunction with KDP. Create Space is if you self publish and you put a physical paperback book on Amazon, and KDP is the digital version of that same book. So I was doing KDP and I was doing. Um, create space and you've got multiple people selling courses on how you can create all of these books and make a lot of money and never write a book and completely outsource it. As someone who started on this journey as a writer, writing books, who has several books on Amazon to this day, um, that is not as easy as they make it sound out to be. I know people who are great writers. I know a guy who was writing a book per month. I think he, he's, he did this for about 60 months. He has 60 books and he has a following and he was doing like 70, $80,000 a month. Dude's a beast. But for the average person who doesn't know anything about keywords, doesn't know anything, and here's the thing. For all you people who want to do these low content books, Amazon is trying to stop people from putting the low content books because Amazon is very customer centric and a lot of the platform is just crowded with all this junk. So they're really trying to dissuade that because there's too many people trying to pull up low content books. And here's the thing. Uh, once again, I understand that many people are looking for passive income and many people are looking to make their money work here's the thing and I'm speaking to the average people not the fake ass millionaires who pretend to be rich in the comment section and absolutely refuse to bribe any proof of that I'm showing you guys bank statements I've shown you titles I've shown you my pay stubs I've shown you ATM receipts so you can trust me because anything I put on here, I can back up. However, once again, 
if you, there was a guy here on YouTube, uh, I need to go ahead and tag it. He retired at the age of 36 and did he do it with stocks? No, he did it with a business. He sold his business for millions of dollars in, you know, in retirement. He's 41 and he has a net worth of $4.4 million. And he has an active business that's making him money. So he didn't even have to touch his investments. His house is paid off. Cause see, here's the thing. When your house is paid off, your car is paid off, it doesn't take a lot of money to live well. This is why you don't need to be a millionaire. This is why you need to practice sound money management. This is why you need to avoid debt. Once again, debt used to make money is good debt in my opinion, but personal debt at the moment, I don't even have one of my personal credit cards. Actually, that's not a lot, that's a lot. I have my American Express Platinum and my American Express Delta Sky Miles. But most of my spend is going to be business going forward. And um, one of the things that I consistently see is this false presentation that you as the average person can deploy a little bit of money in the marketplace as an investment and get a significant yield. I'm about to share some with you. If you are a skilled day trader and you are a skilled options trader, your limitation is money. There's a guy here on YouTube who is in the option space and literally I've heard him say in several videos, he did not have the capital to make the trades he wanted to make and he knows what he's doing. If that is not evidence to the fact that of what I'm saying, you need a significant amount of money to make your money work. There's no ways around this. And you've got all of these people who literally like, hey, I, I did some options. Cause like, here, let me present some to you. Let's say you are really skilled at options. You know how to read the market. You know how to put in your trades. And let's say you put in a trade and you deploy, let's say $10,000 and your trade goes well and you now have $50,000, right? Now I got a question. If you had 100,000 to put in your trade, what would have been your yield? Your yields would have been millions. See, that's the thing that, you know, cause I, I talk to people, I talk to people and I talk to, uh, you know, when I, every time I go to banks, I, I, I just question a Q and a session with the whoever, cause they know, cause bankers know how much money people have. Bankers know how much money people actually have in their checking accounts. They do this stuff. And, um, you know, Chase, uh, Wells Fargo, all of them have trading desks. And these guys hire people out of MIT, PhDs, and that's who you're trading against in the market. See, there's this false, false um, pr pr premise that you're in the market and you're just competing against yourself. That's not true. When you win in the market, that meant that someone else on the other side lost money, typically. Now you can win in the market, like you can buy a stock and your stock can appreciate. No one is losing money in that situation. But in the options world, in the day trading world, when you make a trade and you win, that meant that someone else lost money. And that's why so few options and day trader people are so successful because who you're trading against, you're trading against institutions with billions of dollars and they're buying, they're hiring the best mathematicians, the best PhDs. And that's why you're going to lose most of the time. And that's why they're going to win most of the time. And, you know, I put on here that if you want to start a business and make money really, really quickly, start a service business, right? Y'all want to hear that. Y'all want to hear that. You want to do Toro. You want to do Airbnb. Well, here's newsflash, and this is once again, because once again, I study the markets. I am literally every day seeing a failed Airbnb populate on Zillow as a long-term rental. 
I'm seeing it every day. You wanna know why? Let me explain to you why. And this is why I am not getting in the Airbnb space. And this is why I'm not getting in the Turo space. Those marketplaces are saturated and they're gonna get more saturated and in the saturated, because this is why I do what I do. You know why I win with my, my programs? I, don't, I have little competition. You know who's my competition? Attorneys and CPAs who are not marketing the way that I am. That's my competition. I virtually, from the new program that I'm gonna put out, I'm not, you know, the corporate toolbox, uh, the corporate papers, I have no competition. Uh, the Intellectual Property School, there's quite a few people who have figured out the power of YouTube. So there is some competition there. And the new training that I'm putting up, I'm not gonna have any competition. You wanna know why? Because when you create businesses in markets with little to no competition, more money, more money. How do you think I made $3 million from my house? $3 million in one year from my house with one assistant. Yet I want to go, you know, um, the, the whole car rental thing, because I really thought about it. I was hustling backwards. I actually spent way more money to get the car rental business started than I did to get the business that made me $3 million started. Spent more money, spent more time to make less money. I was 100% hustling backwards. And, you know, it was good for me because I've not had an L like that in a long time. You know, I was feeling kind of invincible because, you know, I had figured out this new thing. It was putting money in my pocket, put me in a position to pay cash for a Porsche. Uh, putting it, you know, um, I'm getting ready to make some moves. Like I, I paid myself $120,000 distribution because, like, once again, I am playing the holding company game. And newsflash i'm not paying myself every month literally to have an s corporation you only have to pay yourself once a year so i pay myself for the first few months of the year and everything else i'm taking out will be a distribution which means no payroll taxes um so that this is how i'm paying myself the rest of the year and i may actually provide some proof of that i may show you my last two pay stubs um because one of the things is I want to be of service and this whole overhyped Andrew State, you know, I don't even consume Andrew Tate content, but because he's so popular, I get bits and pieces of it because I've never sat down and watched an Andrew Tate um, interview. I've never watched one, but I know that he's buying Bugattis. And everyone's talking about Bugattis. And like, I could give a rat's ass about a Bugatti. If I wanted one, I would have one. And but once again, let me say, that would be one of the stupidest things I can do. Because I would top a lot of money and I don't think Bugattis depreciate like average cars because typically Bugatti only makes so many cars per year. And once they make that production model, you, that's it. And the used ones, uh, I don't even know because I've not researched the market, but I have a feeling that these cars hold their value. I just have a feeling. So it wouldn't be a horrible investment, but it would top a lot of useful cash into something stupid. Once again, I can only go so far on these things. Um, like, you know, Rolls Royce. I can afford a Rolls Royce, but once again, as I explained earlier, to spend half a million dollars for a car that doesn't have a sunroof. Uh, and also, here's something else too. If you've ever know, been around them, Rolls Royces are huge. There's a few in the complex. They're huge. I don't want to drive anything that big. It, it kind of reminds me of the Lincoln LTD and the Lincoln Town Car and the Cataract Eldorado of the 70s. These cars were huge, huge. Uh, I'm just, you know, once again, it's a personal choice. You know, there's someone out there that has a Rolls Royce. They love it. They drive it every day. They thoroughly enjoy it. It, it comes down to personal preference. I don't want a Rolls Royce. Because, um, you know, just to the way that I'm built, you know, they're huge. A lot of them, you know, some of them do have sunroofs, but they don't have the stars and all this other stuff. And 
For me, if I had a Rolls Royce, I would have I would run have a chauffeur. And also, I'm not at that age. You know, maybe that'll be a thing in my life at some point in the future where I have a chauffeur because you know I have a car and a chauffeur. Chauffeur minimum is fifty, sixty thousand dollars a year just to pay the salary. <coughs> and they don't work twenty four hours a day. So, once again, you know, for the average person, for the average person, building a business, making two to three thousand dollars per month is life changing money for the average person not all you fake want to be rich folks who be leaving garbage in the comments because once again i'm not engaging with any more fools because every like every time i was like please provide some proof i don't have nothing to prove to you man i don't have to because you know it's not true all right so we're getting ready to get into some new training and if you go ahead and get the program then you will get this new training and it's going to be very specific and it's going to help you level up. It's going to be some stuff you can't Google and it's going to be some stuff that YouTube University ain't even talking about because they don't even know about it because they're not practicing it. So go ahead, get the program. The link is in the first comment and I will see you guys later. All right. First of all, thank you to anyone that has bought any training from bschoolforhustlers.com. Thank you very much for supporting the business. I really appreciate you. Also, thank you to the Nerd Tribe for your well-constructed comments. All right, this is something that's been percolating, and I want to go ahead and go ahead and tell me, have I ever mentioned the art of holding business mentoring program on a YouTube channel? The answer would be no. It was $30,000, and I recently raised the price to $50,000. Now, let's talk about why I never mentioned this program on the channel. This is the Institute of Economic Thought, talking about things that are going on in the economy. 99% of the people who watch this channel are not qualified for the mentoring program because you're gonna to need to have an up and running business making six figures a month for this to even remotely make sense for you. And I've had many people, including Income Cam, who came to my channel after made my CPN video and went to the website and he's like, you got this program, $30,000, man, I got stuff for the people. All right, let me go ahead and say something. You having bad credit has nothing to do with you being black. You having bad credit is you mismanage your credit. So Income Cam, that's a bunch of bullshit for the people, for the people. And I'm gonna say something, um, I'm a capitalist. I believe in a capitalistic society. I operate, I work in a capitalistic society. And if you don't have the money for this product, big whoop, I'm not gonna cry a river. I, and this is something else too. And this is something I learned years and years ago. When I gave away, and let's just go ahead and get to that. When I gave away 19 free business courses from this website, 95% of the people did not take advantage. So I learned that lesson that you could have things that are um, appropriately priced where everyone can buy. Uh, here's the thing, man. If the person who has a problem doesn't care enough to spend money to solve the problem, it ain't that big of a problem for them. So I learned that lesson, you know, for the people, for the people. I literally tried to spend six months giving people a business curriculum that if they had opened up the courses and put in the work, they would make money. And 95% of the people did not take advantage of that offer. And it, it was a very important lesson for me because at the time I was consuming a lot of Gary Vee content. Just give, just give, and just give, and just give. And I gave and it didn't work out because here's the thing. Let's go back to the art of holding business mentoring program. What does this include? This includes something that I cannot scale, my time. I only have 24 hours in the day. And I'll be honest, you wanna know why my consulting packages are so expensive? I really don't wanna to talk to aspirational new business owners who want to discuss and talk about what they're going to do when they don't have a business up and running. I, I simply, it's just, I've been doing this 14 years. I don't wanna to talk to those people. It's not like I hate you, but it's a boring conversation. It's like, hey, you know, I got this ideal. I want, and I, once again, my time is not something I can scale. I only got 24 hours in the day and I do not want to be doing a bunch of talking to people on the phone. So like if my consulting was 500 bucks, that's what would happen. I would literally be spending a lot of time talking to people who have not broken past the mental barrier of actually getting started. So this is why I have never mentioned this program on the YouTube channel. This is why it's not even in the description box because I know the vast majority of people watching the channel, it's not a good fit. So it's pointless, but here's what I'm getting ready to do. B School for Hustlers, business channel. This is what I got going on over here. You know, I, I get a lot of people like, there's only doom and gloom over here, man. It's just doom and gloom. I'm like, I have other channels. If you literally want to start a business, make some money, direct yourself to B School for Hustlers. This is where I drop the business content. And I want to tell you why. There's a different audience over here. I can literally, I've got 80,000 less subscribers over here, right? And I can put a video up here and I'll get three, you know, 15, you know, 1,200 to 3,000 views. And on the main channel, I'll get 3,000. So I have 80,000 less subscribers over here and proportionally, I get more views from a smaller subscriber base because the folks who are over here actually want to start a business. They're interested in starting business. They're interested in doing the hard work. So this is some stuff that I will start talking about over here. And this is some stuff I will start talking about over here. Same thing. 
way less subscribers, but proportionally, I get more views from serious people. Once again, you know, I appreciate the folks at the Institute of Economic Thought. I appreciate the well-constructed comments, but from a business standpoint, and this is something that I am getting ready to really, really work on. Like the videos over here are different and it is not the business content. So if you want, uh, if you want business content, how to start a business, how to deal with credit, how to build real business credit, the fastest path to wealth. If you want this type of stuff, go ahead, go over to the corporate game, get to the corporate game, or be like, this is a B school for hustlers is people starting businesses. This is where the, how to start a business content is. This is, if you already have a business, this is the business game for if you already have a business. Now I will probably start advertising the mentoring program over there. I would never ever advertise the mentoring program over here because 99% of you guys, it's not a good fit. It just doesn't make sense. And I am sick and tired of people skipping over the stuff that they can't afford with the coupon this is like 2500 this is 2300 y'all like oh i don't want that i want the best of you glendon cameron i want the best of you i want your best training even though i'm not qualified because here's something that i have learned years and years ago when i was doing let's see where is it when i was doing 30 days to 2500 i was doing that i had someone who already had a business who went from five and six thousand dollars a month to thirty thousand dollars a month and i had a bunch of people who were new who wanted to start a business but they actually haven't started the business and that should just illustrate to you the point that if you're still in that i want to be starting something phase um once again I, I have love for you i hope you do well i hope you reach your dreams wishes goals ambitions i hope you do but i don't really want to be part of it because it is annoying it's frustrating because for someone and this is one of the things that happen and the reason i have this because this, this comes from years and years ago i had a friend and i was just saying hey if they don't know that i offer this how can they buy it so every now and then i will get someone a business owner someone's like hey you know I see you have all this stuff for beginning people, but you don't have nothing for me. And it's true because the business owner, someone that's been in business three, four, five, six years, um, they have different needs. They have different requirements. They have a different situation and they're going to need some stuff to look at their marketing, their advertising. Um, like I'll tell you one person who got into the program, because this is what happens. It's like, Hey, I've been watching your channel, enjoy your content. And we would just kind of do a custom bill for a business owner. And I had someone who had a business, they were doing 5 million a year running the business. The business owner was kind of running ragged. And then I kind of stepped in and just did a few tweaks. And we went from 5 million a year to a million a month. Just a few little tweaks because here's the thing the business owner had done a lot of stuff correct they had built a business they had cash flow and the same information that you start a business and get to five million is not the same information that's going to get a business to 10 million it's, it's a different set of skill sets it's a different set of management tactics it's a different way of looking at your business and this business owner went as far as she could go until i stepped in and that's what this is for it's not for the rank and file because like once again this, this is one of the reasons that my consulting package is so expensive i don't want to talk to you if you're just playing around with the concept of starting a business i don't really want to talk to you I've been doing this, like I said, 14 years. I want to talk to people. I, I had a great consult with someone who owned a pharmaceutical company and a great consult with someone who owned, they actually were buying and selling gold. This was interesting. It was exciting. These were really dynamic conversations. Now, for the people who want to start a business, this is what I do, group coaching. And a lot of you want one-on-one, -on -one, but once again, my most precious resource is time. So I can, you know, do a bunch of group coaching. I can, you know, 50, 100 people at the same time. That's something I can scale. And that's why I do it like this. You will not talk to me, get on the phone with me for less than 2,500 bucks. It ain't happening because that is a qualifier. If you look at the 2,500 and like you, you have a company, you have revenue of 30 to $50,000 and you've been in business, you spent money on marketing, $2,500 is not that big of a deal for you. But if you don't have a business, you just have a job, you're making 5,000, you're like 2,500. That's a, that, once again, you're not qualified. And the, once again, I don't ever talk smack or crap about people not buying my products. What if you've ever like, oh, you know, you broke, you can't buy my, never. But see, here's the thing. I believe in the abundance mindset today there is someone going out and they're going to drop three million dollars on the bugatti see i understand there there's so much money in the world there's a ton of money in the world there's a lot of money in the world and i get my share of money in the world so i don't trip i don't insult people i don't demean people for not buying my products you can't afford it you can't afford it but please stop contacting me and leaving these comments in the comment section about this program that you can't afford you wonder why you can't afford it Number one, you've not spent three to five years building a business and getting your revenue up to six figures per month. That's why you can't afford it because it's not for you. Um, like once again, I honestly, I actually thought about, you know, giving these courses away again, but all I'm going to do is get a bunch of lazy, do nothing people who are like, oh, it's free. I'm going to sign up for it. and going to do shit with it. Once again, my serious people are at the corporate game. My serious people are at B-School for Hustlers. That's where my serious people are. And once again, the serious content, I put up a video by Will Roundtree, the serious content just doesn't get the views because a lot of people just kind of want to play around with business. They're bought into this, what up, Hustlers? You can actually make, you know, 10, 15, 20, 30 thousand dollars a month, not work that hard, have plenty of time for your hobbies and your family and vacation while not working that hard. I believe that is complete and utter bullshit. Here's the thing. When you start a business, you're going to work harder, not less harder for three to five years until you shape it up, you build your management team, you get it going the way you want to go. And then after it's built, after you've put a management team in place, then you can chill out and then you can relax. But in the beginning, you're going to be working more. But so many people have bought into this concept that, hey, I can like sprinkle some hustle dust on this. And um, yeah, I can get all this money and I can be hanging out with Big Booty Betty. Um, it's just not happening. So once again, please stop leaving comments in the comment section. Stop emailing me about this program because you can't afford it. And I'm not mad at you. Like, once again, I've never advertised this on any channel. And once again, I'm getting ready to 
um, shape this up for B school for hustlers in the corporate game because I do have some new group coaching that's coming. Because once again, I'm gonna say something. I don't have an inferiority complex. I feel that my time is extremely valuable. I feel that my wisdoms and insights are extremely valuable. And um, yeah, you know, if you want to put something together and you are a business owner, you've already done the hard work, you've already got it started. Maybe you know I've had some people that I had to help them switch up their corporate structure, and you know, it, it's a whole different game dealing with a business owner that has built a business, has cash flow, because they've done a lot of things correctly, and it's so much more fun. And like I said, I, I do like <clears throat> the live trainings are coming back. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that is going to happen, um, probably November and December. And you know, like I said, if you don't have a business, I don't like hate you or nothing like that, but I don't want to talk to you on the phone for an hour talking about what you want to do. That's boring. That's straight up boring. And that's one of the reasons that I don't even bring up this stuff. What you will see in the comment section is the program, the intellectual property school. That's what you see. You see nothing about this. Nothing. Because like I said, most people can afford it because they haven't done the work. So once again, please stop contacting me, pestering me, asking me questions. Why should I hire you to do this versus an attorney? Uh, number one, the attorney has never ran a business. See, that's the thing. My experience is extremely valuable. That proved that with being in the storage auction business, writing a book, making millions of dollars from a book, from a book. So. Like I said, you know, I got some new stuff that's coming up, some new stuff to help you guys out. So once again, please stop going in the comments. Please stop going to B School for Hustles and like, you know, like I said, I raised the price. You want, you want to know why I raised the price? To run people off. Because like I said, um, there will literally be a handful of people in the Art of Holding Business Mentoring Program per year. Literally a handful. Maybe 10, maybe 20 people a year. That's it. But that's cool. Because it ain't for everybody. It's not for everybody. So go ahead. Be on the lookout for the new training that's coming. And, you know, if you're serious about business, direct yourself to B School for Hustlers. This is how to start a business content in the corporate game you already have a business you know because i'm getting ready to start talking about some different stuff over here so this is where the serious content is and this is where the uh the, the the crazy stuff is this is where i post the crazy stuff this is where i get into it this is where i just have a little fun so once again that's the thing that's the thing man so thank you for your time thank you for everyone that's bought some training at b school for hustlers we're getting ready to crank it up give me some time to define this to set it up and i will see you guys in